O oh, blessed this sacred water fluid, may you permeate the inside of my mouth cavity with your wetedness, so that I may not suffer of the dry throat, allowing me to speak fluently and eloquently, so that my words may... Is this recording? Oh, sh- Who up there doesn't love a good old RPG? People that don't play them. Well, it just so happened that I wanted to do an RPG review as well as a PlayStation 4 review. Now I get to kill two birds with one stone. I'm not going to pretend to be well versed in the lore that is Star Ocean. Of the games that are available, I've only played two of them. Second Story, and Until the End of Time. The former, a pretty average video game, and I'm being kind with that, that I rarely enjoyed. And Until the End of Time, a very good game that I did not like at first, but upon giving it a second go around, it was pretty good. There was also The Last Hope. I didn't play that very long. The franchise itself may have a broader appeal in Japan, but for what I seem to understand, Star Ocean is the RPG series that's overshadowed by much more popular names here in the States. The biggest dogs in the kennel, Final Fantasy and the Persona games, command the most attention. Even Namco Bandai's Tales series have a stable and loyal fanbase, and Monolith Soft Xenoblade Chronicles is spectacular. Star Ocean's been around for 20 years, but that seems to be about it. It's just... around. Being sandwiched between much more demanded franchises certainly doesn't know favors. The series was created by Triangs, who also developed the Valkyrie Profile games. Valkyrie Profile Samaria, one of my favorite games of all time. They also developed Resonance of Fate. It's certainly ambitious, I'll give it that. I intend to get back into it, but jumping into this game flying blind, it was like trying to learn a foreign language with your tongue covered in fire ants. To start, Integrity and Faithlessness is the most pretentious name for a video game I've ever heard in my entire life. Just rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? What, was Star Ocean procrastination and temerity not snobby enough? How's about Star Ocean, abstrusity and indignation? I could pick on these names for an eternity, but I'll just cut to the chase. How's about something that rolls right off the tongue like Star Ocean? The Quickening. The game's protagonist is Fidel Camus, a young Shorgeman from the small town of Stahl. The most remarkable thing about Fidel is that there's nothing particularly remarkable about him. He's not a bad character, I liked him well enough, and he's a decent sort, but he's about as cookie-cutter a main character as you can get. Why? to specifically teach locals how to defend themselves against these degenerates. It really doesn't help that he looks like Marth, or even Fate, a previous Star Ocean lead, but he also exists at a time when Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE's protagonist, Aoi Itsuki, also has blue hair! You think that's enough blue-haired swordsmen? Did somebody accidentally print out 20 copies from the Xerox machine? Really Fortunately, accompanying Fidel in order to offset his blandness is the adorable ball of cute Miki, who can easily become my favorite Star Ocean character ever. All the best. Relia, you take care of yourself. Miki. Grab happiness by the horn. Fidel. Bye bye, Relia. So long. Toodaloo! I think she heavily resembles Esteles from Tales of Vesperia. Her upbeat, maternal, and protective nature is very endearing, and I find her the most two-dimensional of the cast. Speaking of lacking in dimensions, there's Swordsman Victor, who does about everything he can to remind you that he's a swordsman. What do you mean, fate? Uh, actually, I was injured in the last sortie. <laughs> we'll have to put this duel on hold for a while. Then why did you propose a duel in the first place? 
Raylia, the little mysterious Take girl, accompanies you with powers. Seen it. And, and Fiori Brunelli is a signature who wears the most ludicrous outfit I think I've ever seen in a Perhaps video a game. What is it, Relia? Oh, I'm just watching you. It's good to make observations. Discover anything while watching me? Mm, you're dressed funny. Can't say that didn't hurt. I'm very sorry. Not long after, Earthlings Emerson Kinney and Anne Patriciani join your party. Their purpose is seriously to serve as exposition. That's really about it. Employing Hadian tactics, I see. Looks like someone in Kronos knows his way around a Starfleet battle. And also is the ever-present Welsh. When cute becomes annoying. Thank you, Assistant Number One. With this, I can finally complete my experiment. <laughs> Yes, I've done it! I've proved the existence of alchemy! <laughs> huh? Did I scare you or something? Sorry about that. Wait, hear me out. I swear on my life, I'm not lying. I raised a lot of money by claiming that I would make alchemy viable, but it didn't last. My research was really difficult, though. That part's the gods on- Oh, good grief. Anyways, the world of Fae and its various locations are pretty scenic, and I think it's a nice game to look at. Early on, the palettes are locked into the heavy uses of blues and greens, mainly with Stahl and Rosalian Plains. The textures on some of the rockier locations and outcroppings can be a little bit jarring during navigation. And then there's the character models. They're sharp and detailed enough, but close-ups really do showcase one of Star Ocean's greatest weaknesses. Really, really bad lip flaps. Mr. Mayor! Please, calm down. You're this village's leader. We did it. Right? Operable. Even if they're top of the line, our ships are still mainly research vessels. They don't stand a snowball's chance in hell against three battle cruisers. Transmission from their flagship! Because that looks completely believable, it's difficult to believe this made the final product. It almost makes Blue Stinger on Dreamcast look like the Phantom Pain or something. This is ridiculous! How does that even pass? As an added bonus, one of the DLC options in the game is the ability to download Valkyrie Profile Battle Music. <laughs> that alone bumps this game up an entire score for me. Biased much? I don't care. The combat is very similar to Star Ocean games of the past, preferably until the end of time. But other games of the same ilk kind of outshine it. The combos feel a little bit delayed and robotic. Controlling swordsmen like Fidel gets a little bit old after a while. And fighters like Ann and Victor play decent enough, but their skills are lacking a bit of the punch and psychology of any other given swords wielder in, say, Tales of Zestiria. To be perfectly honest, I got bored of using the sword fighters and I switched to using Fiori and Miki. Being able to use the Signaturgy allowed me to control the pace of battle, and it felt more natural to me. We are a bunch of fools who are too stubborn to accept eternal ruin. Keep that underlying principle in mind! You think you're so strong, try to withstand this! Speaking of skills in this game, you're required to find books in which to teach characters new abilities. The problem with this is that deciding on whom to give these books to. Everyone has their own unique set of abilities, but often share the same line of books, like Signaturgy or Sword Based, so Fidel or Victor could wind up having a move before the other one is able to get the hold of another book, because you never know when you're going to find another one. If you need a Swordsman Hands book, you've got to make a crucial decision on who you're going to give it to, and once you use it, it's gone! What? 
you learn from a book and then you can't use it anymore? What kind of cockamamie logic is that? Oh, hey, what up, man? You got that game informer there? Indeed it is. Oh, well, when you're finished with it, can I take a look at it? I want to find out what's coming out later this month. No. I learned everything that there is to know in the book, so it's useless now. You know you're on fire. Go find another one. Assigning the roles, which are skills that act as feats that will boost a character's parameters and in-battle actions, are kind of cumbersome and a little bit ass-backwards if you ask me. You apply skill points to a master leveling up systems like Attacker or Sage. Since glaciers can move faster than the time it would take to level up a skill technique on its own, why not use those skill points that you gather to spend to enhance your attacks and find books in the library to learn battle feats? That would put an emphasis on exploring the towns and entering locations. By the game's own design, the cutscenes come off as a little bit stiff and robotic. There's no cinematic flair to what happens. Things are hung on one camera shot for such an extended period of time that when things finally do happen, it feels strange. And then it goes on forever and I just got bored. I see. Looks like someone in Kronos knows his way around a Starfleet battle. Enemy phase cannon fire has been detected! Phase cannon beam impact 135 degrees to starboard. Shields now at 94%. Oh, crap. All right. We're gonna have to let a couple of torpedoes through. Fire rounds one and two. Firing rounds one and two. Five seconds until contact. Three, two, one, zero. Ten enemy torpedoes still remain. There shouldn't be anywhere near that many. Who knew their AI was that good? Five seconds until contact! Three, two, Everyone, one. brace for impact! Damage report. We sustained damage from two torpedoes. Shields reduced to 57%. Warp drive is operational. All that damage from two measly torpedoes? The Akagi evaded all torpedoes. The Nimitz took one hit that reduced its shields to 34%. Its warp drive has- Shut up, Emerson! Everything about this game's design just reeks as average. Nothing stands out and nothing really does anything particularly horrible to make you want to ream it. On the same console where you can find Dragon Quest Heroes, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuths, and Valkyria Chronicles, you could probably afford to pass up Star Ocean Integrity and Faithlessness. It's certainly not a bad game by any means, I think a lot of its hate is a little misleading, but at the same time, it really does itself no favors by being, let's just be nice and call it standard. While the game is certainly flawed and it feels way behind its own time, Faithlessness and Integrity is certainly better than The Last Hope, but still not a next-gen breakthrough RPG experience that you'd be expecting from this series by now. It feels like a glorified, souped-up, until the end of time at the very best. And because of that, and it is playable, I'd score it a 6 out of 10. Maybe I'm being a little bit generous, but the ability to switch to the Valkyrie profile music and the Miki character herself makes it worth it to me. She's the best Star Ocean female character ever. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for tuning in for Colonel Fancy Reviews. I'm out, and I still don't have a catchphrase. So that my words may... Is this recording? Oh, shiitake mushrooms. Star Ocean also developed the Val... Pfft. Star Ocean. The series was developed by Triace, who also worked on the Valkyrie Profile series. Some of my favorite games, especially Silmaria. They also helped the... Triace also developed the Valkyrie Profile games. Triace also developed... <laughs> Star Ocean was developed by Triace, who also worked on the Valkyrie Profile games.